What's up, Sarah? So this is officially gonna be video number seven. Gonna get into some math a little bit because we've been focusing a lot on chem lately. I'm not sure if you're more comfortable with math and that's why you wanted chem videos. Um, but you know, you let me know. If you are pretty comfortable with math, this will be the only one. Uh, unless you let me know specific ones you want. But I'm gonna focus on uh, lines and types of lines and how you deal with some problems involving lines, okay? So what we're gonna do first is first you gotta know what the forms of a line are. And there are three main ones <coughs> that you'll need to know. Okay, the first one. The standard form of a line. Okay, standard form. And it's always of this form. Okay? This is standard form of line, AX plus BY equals C. <coughs> equals C. Visually, all you need to know is that the X's and the Y's are both on a single side of the equation and a number without a variable is on the right. Usually it's the right. They could flip-flop it, you know, have this on the left and that stuff on the right, but in general, this is it. So some examples would be this. As an example. Okay, just A, B, and C, they're just coefficients. That's all they are. They could be, uh, they could be really anything. They could be nasty decimals or negatives or whatever, but the rule for standard form is the lead guy, the X guy, has to be positive. And if it's not, you gotta basically multiply everything by negative one or divide everything by negative one. And the second thing is you're not allowed to have any decimals or any fractions anywhere. So if you do, you gotta, like let's say you have like one, one half X, you know, minus four. You gotta multiply clear fractions, you gotta multiply everything by two so that the fraction goes away. Okay, that's standard form of a line. And very closely related and not often <coughs> dealt with. It's called general form. General form is very, very similar to this. But it would be something like this. Okay. Basically, they bring everything over to the left, including the number by itself, and they just have a zero on the right. So, with our example, this would be general form of this line. Okay, it just looks grosser, you know, it's, it's the same, same thing. Okay, general form. Standard, general. Same rules apply, no negative leading off, no fractions, no decimals anywhere. Cool? Next up are gonna be some good examples of some more common lines that you'll be dealing with. Okay, and here they are. They magically appear. We got point slope form, which is y minus y1 equals the slope, which is m times x minus x1. I'll explain that one if you haven't ever seen it. It's a little bit nutty, but it's easy, trust me. And then the most common one is slope intercept form. Y equals mx plus b. M is a slope. B is the y intercept, also known as where on the y axis the graph crosses the y axis. Okay? So, in this guy, point slope form, x1 and y1 are coordinates of a point that are given to you. So let's say you're trying to find the equation of a line that has a slope of, let's say, three halves, and it goes through a certain point, maybe like one negative seven. Okay? I'm telling you the slope of a line and the point it goes through, and I need you to find the equation of the line. So all you do is plug and chug into this top guy, okay? This is m, that's x1, that's y1. So remember, for most, most of these equations, you're always gonna have an x and a y together. That's why this y doesn't have a little subscript by it, it's just y, and this guy right here is just x. These guys with the ones subscripted next to them, they get subbed out. So what we would get is y minus negative seven equals three halves x minus one, or this. That's how we do it. 
Okay, so all we do, we put the slope in per m, right there, right there. Uh, I forgot parentheses. There we go. Okay, all we're doing is we're plugging in the x value that they gave us into the formula, the y value they gave us into the formula. Because the y value is negative, I put the parentheses there just to highlight that because that's going to change to a plus. Okay, and then slope intercept form right here, y is all alone. It wouldn't even have the plus 7 here. So I would have to subtract 7 if I started off in point slope form. So if I'm dealing with, uh, uh, let's say, let's say a line has a slope of 4 and it goes to the point 1, 2, what would it be in slope intercept form? Well, that's my m value, goes right there. And I got an x and a y to go right there and right there. Just plug in and chug and solve them for b. So let's see what happens. So I'm going to plug and chug. Look what happens. I get the y value equals the slope value times the x value plus b. See those are all right there. And then I do just a little bit of math. 2 equals 4 plus b. I subtract 4 from both sides. I show my work so nothing bad goes, goes on in the problem. Then I get b equals negative 2, which means it crosses the y at wherever this line goes and how steep or how flat it is. It always crosses the y-axis at negative 2. Now the most common mistake is circling the b value and thinking you're done. You're one step away from being done. Okay, I plug in the slope for m, I plug in the y-intercept for b that we found was negative 2, and I walk away from the problem. It's that simple. Okay, now of course there could be like multiple ways you could be asked to do this, but that's the general idea. Now for a couple of special lines. Remember I said that most lines have both an x and a y, but not all lines do. Purely vertical lines and purely horizontal lines behave a little bit differently. <coughs> so check this out. If you're dealing with a purely horizontal line or a purely vertical line, horizontal lines just have y equals a number, the vertical lines just have x equals a number. That's it. That's all they are. So, for example, See this problem says, hey, find a horizontal line and a vertical line, both going through the point negative 7, negative 4. Well, here's this point. Now, if there's a vertical line going through that point, check out what would happen. You would have all these points stacked on top of each other, which would mean their x coordinate is always negative 7. Only 7. Now, because all these line or all these points above and below. Negative 7, negative 4. 
are the same horizontal distance away from the origin. All of their x coordinates are going to, have to be the same at negative 7. So I follow this pattern for a vertical line. x equals just a number. What is the x coordinate that all these dudes have? Negative 7. Now, similarly for horizontal, I'm going to say, look, they'd all be down here. They would all be down there because that's tracing a horizontal line. And G, what would the y coordinate be for each of those? It'd be the same y coordinate that this guy has, negative 4. So all I do. is I say y equals negative four, and I'm done. So those are very, very quick, but they're very, very effective uh, techniques to solve those. And teachers love testing you on those because they're unique. So, I'm gonna cut it right there. It's a little bit of a shorter video. You let me know uh, if you still need help on math, or maybe this stuff is too basic for you, or maybe it's like way, way too difficult and you need more on this. Let me know, we'll do more uh, tomorrow. I want to get you all caught up as always. Have a good day. Feel better. We'll see you soon.